Cooking proteins is among the most time and labor intensive aspects of creating meals. That effort is often what prevents people from cooking a meal each night. I'm guilty of this too. I'll open the pantry to scavenge for something edible and when I find nothing, move to the fridge only to strike out again. Then I repeat this process until my standards are low enough to accept that I'm having a handful of chocolate chips and a can of beans for dinner. But it doesn't have to be this way. I'm going to show you how I bulk prep chicken breast to keep in snack city in my freezer so that I'm able to make quick and easy meals in a flash. You can use it to make a lazy chicken and rice bowl for dinner, a wrap filled with a wealth of flavors and textures for lunch, or some amazing tacos for a midnight snack. Here's how it's done. You're going to go to the store and tell the person behind the meat counter, give me every last chicken breast you have in this store and don't question me about it. Then they're going to say something like, sir, we have almost two tons of chicken in the back. To which you will reply, never mind. I'm going to stick with roughly three pounds. Forget this interaction ever took place. Then when you get home, pull out a cutting board and your three pounds or 1.3 kilograms of chicken breast and cut it into small pieces of about a half an inch in thickness. This is about the size I shoot for. If they get any longer than this, I'll cut them in half. I find that if you make your cuts too thin or too small, they are more prone to drying out after cooking and reheating. Continue slicing your way through the chicken and toss it all into a large bowl once it's cut. Then to the bowl, add two tablespoons or 30 grams of oil, two teaspoons or 12 grams of salt, one and a third tablespoons or 12 grams of garlic powder, two teaspoons or six grams of onion powder, two teaspoons or six grams of paprika, and two teaspoons or two grams of dried oregano. Mix the chicken around in the bowl to thoroughly coat each piece with the oil and the seasonings. Once all the seasonings are mixed in, get out a large sheet pan, I think this one I'm using is about 24 inches by 18 inches, and spray it liberally with oil. Dump your chicken in the center and then spread it evenly around the pan, making sure to give each piece as much space as possible. It's going to be crowded and that's okay, but if your chicken is layered up on this pan, you might want to consider using two. It's fine if the pieces of chicken are touching, but if they are stacked up on top of each other, it will be better for you to use two pans. I moved this into the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius and I baked it for 8 minutes. I know what some of you are going to say. 8 minutes isn't enough to cook chicken. Trust me, yes it is. This is cut small, and if there's one thing that you absolutely positively must not do, it's overcook this chicken. If you have any doubts with yours, temp it. Look at mine. 169 degrees Fahrenheit, plenty hot, and even borderline too far. If you blast this chicken to 190 degrees Fahrenheit, it's going to be tough, dry, and a nightmare to eat, and that's what we call a waste of time. The next step is to allow the chicken to cool, and there's a lot of water in this pan, so I'm going to prop it up on a spoon to allow the water to drain to one side while the chicken cools on the other. After it has cooled off and it's done steaming, I'm going to transfer it over to a smaller sheet pan that will fit in my freezer so it can be flash frozen before packing it away. If you care about precise nutritional estimations, I would recommend grabbing a final cooked weight for the total of your chicken. I snagged a bite of mine before I weighed it, so I'm going to round up the total to an even 1200 grams. If you split those 1200 grams into 12 100 gram servings, each serving would have about 177 calories and 35 grams of protein. So per gram, that's about 1.77 calories and 0.35 grams of protein. This tray of chicken is now getting moved into my freezer where it will sit uncovered until all the pieces are frozen solid. This is going to help make sure that they all freeze individually so that when I pack them away, it's easy to pull out a snack sized portion. If you skip this step and try to vacuum seal them in the bags while the pieces are still soft, it's going to compress all together and freeze in one giant block. And now that the chicken's all frozen, I can pack them away in my Zwilling Fresh and Save bags, the sponsor of today's video. When it comes to storing snacks, and food in my freezer, I have found that vacuum sealing is the best method to do so. It protects the food from moisture and air, which helps prevent freezer burn and keeps it fresh for up to five times longer. To fit the three pounds of chicken, I used two of the medium sized fresh and safe bags, sealed them up, and then removed all the air with the vacuum pump. These bags are able to be opened, closed, and revacuumed, and they're also reusable, so when I'm done with them, I'll wash them out with some hot soapy water and toss them in my cupboard for the next use. Zwilling is giving a deal to US-based members of TMPM Nation where if you purchase the 7-piece vacuum starter set, they'll send you 10 extra medium bags for free if you use the code MULEPREP at checkout. Shout out to Zwilling for sponsoring the video. Move your bags into Snack City and now you have high quality protein ready to go whenever you need it. So how do you use that chicken? Let me show you three different methods. We are going to do a lazy chicken and rice bowl, a chicken wrap, and a pollo poblano taco. We're gonna start with the chicken and rice bowl, which may be one of the laziest, low effort meals you can possibly make. You know those times when you need a meal and you want absolutely nothing to do with cooking and you say to yourself, dude, just get something on the plate. 
This is for those times. Whole Foods has these vegetable fried rice bags in the freezer section. I think they're $2 and some change. They're perfect for times like this. A 125 gram serving is 140 calories. You add however much rice you need to get full. You can go straight from the freezer into a microwave safe bowl. And if you wanted to, you could add in some extra frozen vegetables for added nutrition. I'm not gonna do that. That's gross. Then go into the freezer and pull out a bag of your prepped chicken and add in however much you desire. Remember 100 grams of this chicken has roughly 177 calories and 35 grams of protein. Then you can move that bowl over into the microwave and reheat it until it is hot. Anytime you reheat this frozen chicken breast in the microwave, you need to be sure you decrease the power level to about 50%. Doing this will prevent the chicken from drying out and help it taste better after it's reheated. Once it's hot, the last step is to add your favorite hot sauce. If you're also in Texas, I just found this habanero hot sauce from HEB and it is the one. I don't want to be clouded by recency bias when I say this, but I think it might be my favorite hot sauce of all time. That's all there is to this one. Five minutes and you've got a meal on the plate. Very simple, but effective. It's perfect for when you get home from work or the gym and you just need something to eat quick. Now let's talk about this chicken wrap for a nice and easy lunch. I eat a lot of rice, so I've always got leftover rice in the fridge. I did about 60 grams to a bowl, as well as 100 grams of my frozen chicken, then I threw this in the microwave to reheat. While that was going, I grabbed a handful of roughly 25 grams of spring mix, tore it up into smaller pieces, sprinkled a little salt and pepper over the top, and then 10 grams of rice vinegar. Mixy mixy mix to combine, and there we have our greens. I also grabbed a few slices of aroma tomato and some red onion that I rinsed under cold water to take out the bite. When my rice was heated, I added 10 grams of mayo, a dash of paprika, a sprinkle of salt, and I mixed it all together to combine. Then it was time to construct my masterpiece. I grabbed a roughly 10 inch tortilla, laid down my rice for a base, followed that up with the chicken, then I added the tomatoes, red onion, and greens. Now we wrap it all up. Some of you may recall I am the worst roller of burritos and wraps the world has ever seen, so if you don't want to see a complete and utter disaster, I'm warning you now, avert your eyes. Attempt number one was almost catastrophic, but it ended up being a blessing in disguise because I realized I forgot the best part. I didn't add any hot sauce. I squirted a little on top and I went at it for round number two. Look, I'm not proud of it, but I got the job done. It's rolled, it's just not gonna stay together. So I have to cheat and use some parchment paper in order to keep everything inside. Pass a knife through it to cut it in half. My fat head can't get out of the frame again. And there we have our lunch, a chicken wrap. It's a little bit more effort than our lazy chicken and rice bowl, but you should still be able to get this done in under 10 minutes. It's obviously fully customizable. It's just a sandwich. So make it your own and add whatever toppings you prefer. And last but not least, we've got these Pollo y Poblano tacos. This is a method I learned from an old Ethan Chabowski video, and if you haven't seen that, I'm gonna link it down below in the description. He's much more of a purist than I am. This is a bastardized version of his recipe. I chopped up a poblano pepper and about a quarter of a yellow onion into a large dice, and then heated a half of a tablespoon or eight grams of oil over high heat in a skillet. I dumped in about 60 grams each of the peppers and onions and tossed them around in the oil, then seasoned them lightly with salt and left them in the heat so that they could scorch on the bottom side. While that was happening, I measured out 100 grams of my frozen chicken, then I stirred the peppers and onions around to the other side and placed my chicken directly on top so that the steam would help it thaw. I covered it all with a lid to allow it to cook, and while that was happening, I heated up some tortillas over the flame on the gas stove in the back. After a couple of minutes, I returned to the skillet. My onions and peppers had developed some nice char and color, and I chopped up the chicken into smaller pieces with a spatula. For the last step, I added in 48 grams of Oaxaca cheese right over the top, allowing the cheese to fall down into the skillet so that I can get good browning on that as well. The crispy brown bits of cheese is the best part of these tacos. I set my tortillas up to be filled, and then divided the contents of the skillet evenly between each tortilla. I ended up making three of them and these wouldn't be complete without a little of that habanero hot sauce over the top. These were incredible. The charred bits of pepper and onion and the brown pieces of cheese are unbeatable. This one again is a bit more effort but it's still less than cooking a regular meal and the amount of flavor you get per unit time invested it can't be matched. Your options with this chicken are virtually endless and keeping it in snack city can save you when you're in a pinch and you need a high protein meal. The written version of the recipe is published on my website and there is a link to that in the description below. I'm also going to include a link to the Zwilling Fresh and Safe Vacuum Starter Set in case you're interested in starting a snack city of your own. Here are two other high protein snack recipes that you can keep in your freezer. Shout out to everybody that made it this far. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Goodbye.